Welcome back. So we have the drive line installed, the 12 volt system established. Something that's kind of important to a moving vehicle is the brakes and power steering. Luckily today I have someone who is way smarter than I am. You might recognize him. He's the one who helped me start my YouTube channel. Um, what was that, like eight years ago? So we've kind of come full circle and uh, should be an interesting day. Let's get started. So way back when I first started my YouTube channel, I was a college student. This isn't a story I've told a whole lot on my channel. And I had a Jeep, a super old Jeep that had broken down and I took it to a shop and the shop said it needed a like a thousand dollar repair. But I jumped on YouTube and this guy had a way of fixing it for like 80 bucks instead of a thousand. So I messaged him. I didn't know he lived in Utah at the time. And I was like, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you making like videos? to help people out. Do you remember what you said back to me? And he was super nice, he responded to me. I was literally just a random dude on the internet. Do you remember what you said? Just trying to reduce world suck. Yep, <laughs> decrease world suck. My main thing is, uh, I read a book and in the book it said, if you're of service, you'll be compensated. It was actually a recording. It was started the whole self-help kind of thing. I was in a dark place is why I started my YouTube channel and it was a way to bring positivity, help people. I feel good, they feel good, and just the general the general thing was to empower people and get them to be able to fix their stuff. Which makes him an incredibly useful asset on this project. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I started my YouTube channel and I, I was doing like Jeeps and motorcycles and stuff like that. And then I branched off into cell phones and more of the electronic stuff. But it's fun that we've come full circle and now we're working together again. Which is fun. I, uh, it makes me excited to see how far you've come with your thing. So hopefully we can get the Hummer today with some uh, braking ability and power steering ability because both systems are connected. What's really nice is that electric vehicles use something called regenerative braking where the electric motor can slow down and take some of the force um, from the moving vehicle and transfer it back into the battery. Um, using, you know, the, the motor turns into a generator at that point. And when your tires are this big and you have that much rotational inertia and mass with these giant tires, you need all the help you can get. So we do have the other motor over here, the one that was previously in the Humvee. I don't know if you can see that. So besides the fact that all of this is currently sitting outside of the Humvee, how come we can't use the power steering and brakes from this setup in our EV conversion? If cars would stayed as small as they were in the beginning, it would be fine. But because we have bigger, stronger, heavier cars, we need bigger, stronger, heavier braking, and our legs just aren't up to that. So we've come up with different means, whether it's a vacuum brake booster or a hydro boost system like this used to have, instead of running it off of a belt off the front of the engine, we're gonna use this electric pump in order to achieve the same thing. A lot of the bigger trucks these days, like the Toyota Tundras and some of the Chevys, are using electric power steering pumps to decrease the load on the motor as well as it's more, it's easier to adjust the levels of steering while you're driving. And I'm using the steering and the braking interchangeably because like he said, we're using one pump to control both of them. And it'll make more sense to all of us in a second when we see it happen. So, so this, this pump is off of a Toyota pickup truck, we think. They use the same motor, uh, the electric part of it for Priuses and all that kind of stuff, but this assists. It basically takes whatever force you have and it just amplifies that force. So underneath here, we're still gonna try to use the same brake pedal and that brake line comes out up here into, you said it, the Hydro Boost? So see how the steering is here? Brake pedal is like right under that there's a plunger or a rod that pushes into the hydro boost. The hydro boost increases the pressure going into the master cylinder. Master cylinder is like a syringe and then these uh, brake lines take that hydraulic pressure to each of the wheels to give the stopping power. And we have this reservoir here. We kind of have some empty space on this side. So the reservoir for the fluid is gonna be up top, kind of like a gravity fed. And then the pump is gonna be down there mounted on the frame. And of course we'll clean up some wires and stuff. You ready? Ready, let's get her. All right, now we've got the clearance that we need to drill these holes. This pump's gonna have a home. So 
So this hole punch leaves just a little small divot on each of our paint marking points so that our drill bit can sit in the center and not swivel off path. Mounted up and bolted through the frame. You can see the back side of the bolts there. Now we gotta get the hoses on. So this is the pressure hose that delivers pressure from the pump up to the hydro boost and then from the hydro boost onto the power steering. That has to have two different fittings. There's nobody that makes one that fits a Hummer and fits a Toyota pressure pump. So we had a fitting made, a hose made, and then this was reused from the Hummer side. So we're able to source that and get everything nice and tight so it can handle the extreme pressure. So you're saying they don't make custom hoses for... Uh, From Toyota to Hummer? <laughs> Toyota no, to, to Humvee yet. conversions? Being the trendsetters we are, it'll happen, but we're the pioneers, so we got some trail blazing expenses. Heck yeah. First to do it. Getting the drive line back in place. I do like that the pump is rubber isolated right here, here, and up at the top with these big rubber bushings. Kind of the same thing that are inside of these transfer case mounts, as well as the mounts up here for the motor. The rubber isolation just helps keep everything from getting damaged when it's going over bumps in the road or off-roading. Uh, keeps things more safe. And quiet. And quiet. And quiet. While the pump is humming, it hums the whole hummer. <laughs> <laughs> have to be really careful when you thread these in or else it can ruin your day. So when you tighten it, you can tighten it here or here and have it chafe and die. So we're gonna go kind of in the middle so it's got some room to breathe. Remember one cool thing about the hummers is that they have that access through the cab. They call it the doghouse, right? Yep. Brian can work on the hummer from inside the hummer. So right now at the bottom of the reservoir, we have this white Teflon tape that we're wrapping in the direction of the threads to help create a better seal from the reservoir to the tube heading down to the pump. And yes, we are working on 400 volts of battery. Goodness. I think, I think we're still good though. This is the return. When the work's done and the fluid comes back to roost, it goes in this way. So this reservoir tank is what holds the liquid until the pump needs it. And then the pump takes it, pressurizes it, and uses it for the power steering and the brakes. This is the mama bird mouth that feeds that. This is the baby bird mouth that gets the cool stuff coming back. Because after the fluid comes from the power steering and the brakes, it goes into a cooler. There's a relationship between pressure and heat. They both go together. When pressure increases, temperature increases, and when pressure drops, temperature drops. This is a high-tech hose cutting device. If you just kind of roll the hose, it hits the blade and cuts it where it's thinner and you get a nice clean edge. So it's got a bunch of nylon or cotton or something in it to prevent expansion. And that way it can handle uh, the pressure without creating weird stuff. And these clamps are doing us proud. A sign of a quality hose setup is these little washers. They just help to cap off the end. Just like a two by four, if you put wax on the end, it doesn't warp. If you protect the ends of your hose, then those fibers won't conduct unwanted things into the hose that can degradate its integrity. And if you have spray silicone, man, this goes a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> when it's done, this shouldn't spin. It means you got pressure against it. So as far as power connections go, this is the main connector right here, and then the ground is just running off to the side here with one of these bolts. And apparently this connector can handle 75 amps worth of energy, so I assume that at peak power, this might also be able to pull 75 amps. But I think that peak 75 amps is only going to happen when I'm turning really hard at a standstill or pressing on the brakes really hard, and it's not continuous. I'll have to measure that when uh, we finally get it running. 
Either way, it's going to need some pretty beefy wire, some 10 gauge, and one of those connections, which luckily are also available on Amazon, is a pretty standard connection. And I can run it back to my 12 volt control panel that we saw earlier. So each of these large metal connectors have a little metal lip inside, and that metal lip is going to catch on this 90 degree angle here on the tip of this. And it is now secure. And the connector can just come together like this, but since I don't want it to turn on yet, we're going to leave it disconnected. Can pull the wire. I cover a lot more of this in my 12 volt video, but a quick little recap is that when the key switches on, this row of fuses also get power, and it sends power to the signal wire of this relay here. And when this relay gets power, it sends a lot more amperage, up to 60, out this output down here, which then goes to the power steering pump. Assuming, of course, that the power steering pump does pull a reasonable amount of amperage. If it pulls more than what this relay can handle, then I'm going to have to find another solution. But that's what this is all about. That's what life is all about. So, Brian, what's this? This is uh, Dexmark. It's just hydraulic fluid that has all the right properties and additives to be used in a transmission or a power steering system. Tell me if I say anything wrong. We have the reservoir sitting here going down to the pump and then the pump comes up here, the hydro boost, which runs the power steering and the brakes, right? Uh, specifically for the brakes. So the power steering is coming from the gearbox down here. We call it the power steering gear or power steering gearbox. And it boosts the, the ability to turn. Perfect. So then as the loop comes from the brakes to the power steering, we have this hose right here, which comes over and eventually will be attached to a radiator for the cooling. So everything is connected right now and the key is off, so we shouldn't hear anything when I plug it in. But we did just fill it up with fluid, and I'm told by Brian here that it might be a little bit turbulent starting up because there's air bubbles inside. But if I turn the key, are we ready? Are we sure we're ready? If I turn the key, we should turn on the power steering and brake pump. All right. So far, no leaks, though. Go for it. Those are the air bubbles coming up. You'll notice that the level of the fluid's gone down significantly. That's in direct proportion to how much air was in the system, and it's now come up. That's See my pinky? Yeah. It's working. That's cool. So we tentatively have the power steering working with two kind of caveats. One is kind of loud, so I'm going to try to sound deaden that later. The second thing is I'm using a regular relay to power the power steering pump. We think that by installing this guy, we will the solenoid will be able to have more power running to the power steering pump. A power steering pump's about the size of a starter, so it makes sense that a starter solenoid like a fender mount for a Ford would be suitable for it. You can hear the pump slowing down. When it slows down like that, that's a sign that it's not getting enough power. So now we install the fire hydrant solenoid. We'll see if it fixes that problem. So this is like a big relay. Um, you've got these two poles and we want them to clap together solidly. Uh, we just need to see if this is, can be used as ground or not. So go. we need ground and power. This tool is cool because you can take the terminal here and now this is getting ground all the time. And we know that because, I'm gonna turn the sound on. You see it light up green. And when you send power, it lights up red. So we'll so oh, it's nice because you can be able to test a device or a circuit or whatever because you can put power and ground where you want it. All right, so we have the solenoid parked right here and it works a lot the same way as a relay does where you have the two wires, you know, one's ground and one's signal. And then this is pulling power from the battery and sending it directly to the power steering. It's still running good. It's not stopping like it was before. 
it would slow to almost stop. This is lugging through it. There we go. Now we just need to make it a little quieter. If you can think of any ways to make this hydraulic pump any quieter, let me know down in the comments. I'm thinking if I drive with this longer than a couple minutes, I might start to go crazy. Maybe using the original Hydro Boost isn't the best option. It does work though, and we did learn a lot. All right, we are done. We have power steering and brakes now, both of which are very important to safety. safety. Huge thanks to Brian for helping me out. He definitely made this project possible, this part of the project possible. Uh, where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me at Brian's Mobile One on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. All right. Thanks so for watching. I'll see you around.